The Southern Connected Communities Project was born out of our residents' desire not only to bring broadband to rural Appalachia, but to also accomplish ownership, equity, and affordability. A wireless backbone is delivered 25 miles from the city of Knoxville to our tower via the public 11 gigahertz spectrum. Broadband is then redistributed to our communities using line of sight AC technology provisioned through ubiquity air fibers. The real power of our project, however, is the ability of our communities to own and understand this technology. In this way, this solution is a model for what a community-controlled broadband ISP could be in rural Appalachia in the South. So currently we're getting backhaul sent to this tower that we have on site, and the tower is an 80-foot tower at the top of this massive hill, um, and then we put Ubiquity's um, rocket air system, basically sending signals to each one of our buildings. And we have, I think, six buildings connected to it right now. And then we capture the signal at the office and then we, or whatever building we're in. Basically what that means is installing a dish, pointing the dish to the tower from the building and they capture the signal and put it into a Wi-Fi router in the building. We're using Ubiquity's hardware to run all of this. Um, and then we've used Unify, which is actually Ubiqu Ubiquity software, to basically monitor each Wi-Fi system in each building throughout the property. So yeah, that, that's, general, that's pretty close to what we usually get. I would say on a normal day we get about 70-ish uh, download speeds and maybe 40 upload speeds. We don't we don't get taught how a lot of these things work, like how our you know how our TVs work, how our internet works, how our lights work, any of that stuff, and so it makes it seem like magic. Um, and it people don't always realize that it's something like we can understand and it's something we can we can operate. The goal isn't necessarily to um, to do things the fastest possible way, it's to do it in the way that everyone is bought in and understands what they're getting into and wants it and that it's a, a process of empowerment for everybody involved. Um, so our role is to, I think, to help people, not only to educate people as in just giving them information, but in learning with people. My name is DJ Coker. I'm from Duff, Tennessee, which is like at the cusp of the Clearport Valley in Campbell County. The internet in my area is too expensive and I'm, I'm not able to afford it. Owning our own internet, that's exciting. Having it in general is exciting too, but have the ability of owning it means we can control it. We come to like the ideal of owning our own and having the line of sight over fiber because um, it's more cost effective um, and owning your own provides jobs in the area. If the line falls, it's not gonna throw the internet out for hours or hours or whatever it takes to fix it. It's just more um, feasible for the rural area um, than fiber. When we started this um, over three years ago, we it seemed more like a dream, like just an ideal. Um, and after all our research and visiting other communities, and it's um, it's a, an attainable dream. It's one that we can make come true because we we have the knowledge, we have the skills. They're very easy. Um, so we think we can do this. We know we can do this. It's not only in rural areas like Tennessee that people are taking charge of their own media. Here's a story we reported back in 2017 from Detroit. If you're just watching the news, you would probably believe that Detroit is totally blighted and that it has uh, totally deteriorated over the past 50 years under the leadership of primarily African Americans. And at this point in time that the city is totally bankrupt, is over 18 million in debt, and that the city has to be uh, saved from itself. I think also part of the narrative has been that the city is coming back. And a lot of times what we have to educate people on is that we ask the question coming back for whom? Uh, and then we also asked the question in terms of all of the blighted properties, where did the people go? 
There's a lot of new development happening in the city, which is very new. It's happening rapidly. Um, and it's a little disconcerting, I think, to those that have been here um, for a very long time that have struggled without any funding, any support, and with a corrupt government. Um, it feels as though the, the development is not happening for those people. The development is actually happening for a new tax base to come in and sort of pull us out of you know, our emergency management and our bankruptcy. The thing that's pretty intense about Detroit's connectivity is um, that 40% of folks don't have broadband. Um, and then like 33% of those live below the federal poverty level, which means that even affording broadband is, is kind of impossible. The way in which we've addressed um, digital access and broadband adoption here in Detroit is through community technology. To do this work of community technology requires both community organizing and uh, IT expertise. And so Anderson Walworth here and myself have been working on um, wireless networks, learning everything we can about them, teaching several communities both here in Detroit, in New York, and around the world on how to do both the IT and the community organizing aspects of it. Anderson can sort of show you around this uh, to tell you what the routers are, what they do, and how we make um, a community wireless network. Also what the intranet is, which is where the apps live, and that's um, uh, those are resources that you can access without the internet connection. Never loved heights. I've kind of had to force myself up these rooftops for the last five years. So we're on the rooftop of Allied Media Projects. There are um, four or five routers up here. This is one of our, our nodes, or one of our, our mesh routers. And this one in particular, it, it actually is off kilter. It's supposed to be pointed this way towards the hardware store, and it's not. So it's good that we came up here. I mean, the obvious thing it can do, if you hook it up to an internet connection, it will share it to the rest of the routers in the network. But another thing it can do is it can host local applications or local servers. So um, you could host any, anything from um, like a Minecraft server or um, like we have an app that hosts local stories and poetry from the, from the neighborhood that everyone can access on the, the network. More than half the work is the organizing part. It's just getting to know your neighbors, getting to know the local organizations, and finding other people to help support the network. For me, one of the best ways of communicating and learning about what's going on is through talking to other people. The Allied Media Conference is a nexus of that kind of sharing for us. Our role is to hold that space and to make it the most generative space possible for these types of critical connections and new ideas. I do think it's possible for media to model and, and really embody that type of exchange of knowledge across places. People should constantly be thinking about how do we create our own platforms, how do we get more of our stories out there, how do we show more and more people. I think it's a, about the infrastructure. Like what is the current ecosystem that's available for all of this to thrive in? And is there one? And if there's not one, okay, well then how do we make that happen? Or how do we make that possible? How we plug in to maybe some other infrastructure ecosystem that's available? What does that actually mean and feel like and actually look like to do something that's collaborative and creative and successful? And what is success? How do we measure it? <laughs> in the like super long term, the end goal would definitely be to have these narratives be the ones that we're watching, the ones that people are seeing uh, across the country and across the world, and the ones that they're using to refer to the city when they're talking about what happens here.